Hey there, welcome to mini lecture two for chapter 14. Mendelian genetics. We're going to start with some Punnett squares. So we've got, let's start with our purple flowered plants. Versus white flower. Okay, so remember genetic rules to live by. Um, you've got to start by looking at the possibilities of the purple flower versus white flower plants. Um, so they're true breeding plants. That means they have to be homozygous for each trait. And this is only the parental generation. Okay, so let's go ahead. So with purple flowers, um, we know it has, it's, it's a dominant trait. Um, so we expect to write big P, big P. With white flower plants, we know it is a recessive trait. And I'm just going to, obviously, I'm not going to make white flower uh, plants a white P here. Um, so we'll just do it in black. So little P, little P. And I'm, I'm going to make a little curly in my P so you can tell them apart. Okay, so again, that's going to be homozygous recessive. And this one here is homozygous dominant. Okay, so I only have one type of gamete that I can make with homozygous organisms or homozygous for a particular trait. Uh, we only have a large P here. Okay, there's my gamete. And, well, you know, for, for fun, just get you in practice of doing it. So we've got big P, big P. Those are the possibilities, and those are the only possibilities. And with this one, we've got little P, little P. And that's, that's it. That's all we have. Those are our possibilities. All right, so let's cross them in a pun and square. I'm going to do my Punnett square like this. Again, this is my parental generation. Okay, so we've got big P, big P up here. Little P, little P down here. And we cross them. So big P, big P, little P, little P. So that's for this row. So you, it's kind of like a multiplication table. I always think of it. So big P here. I usually put the one in the top row first. And typically, actually, when you're doing these uh, Punnett squares, you usually put the dominant trait first. You don't put the the recessive trait first. You usually put the dominant trait first. So that's why big P is first. So that's just convention. There's no really a wrong way to do it, but you kind of want to just follow the basic rules. All right. Um, and that's for this row. And then let's go for the second row. Again, this is going to be the same thing for the second row. Big P, big P. Little P, little P. So 100%, so this is F1 generation, 100% of the offspring are heterozygous and their genotype is big P, little p, and they are 100% parental. 
purple. So the purple plants. Okay. All right, so 100% of them are purple plants. Again, this is the F1 generation. So what we can do to get F2, so to get F2 generation, or the second generation of offspring, F1 generation, is self-fertilized. Okay, so let's, okay, so with F, F2, we self-fertilize F1. Okay, so again, uh, we have two types of gametes here. So we cross big P, little p, Remember, it's diploid cells, right? Cross. You're, you're self-fertilizing the plants, so you're crossing, crossing them together. All right. So again, this is the this is the genotype, right? This part is the genotype. The phenotype is purple. but they're heterozygous, right? Okay, so what are the possible gametes we can make from these two organisms? They're pretty straightforward. Okay, so we can make a big P here, a big P on this side, and a little P over here, and a little P over here. So again, you, I, I just like to think, okay, I'm separating this these uh, homologs out into different cells, and that's, I, I have these possible gametes. All right, so let's do another Punna square and cross these together. So this is gonna be the F2 generation. Okay, and then we're gonna do big P, big P, little P, little P, and then the offspring. This is now this is where it gets interesting. F two generation is where it gets interesting. So you cross these two, right? We're gonna have big P, big P. The next row is, or the next column is big P, little P. little p with this row here we're going to have big p little p and then finally little p little p all right so the phenotypic ratio which is what does it look like Okay, so this one's purple, right? That's homozygous dominant. This one's purple. That's heterozygous. This one's purple, this is also heterozygous. But this one is white. So the phenotypic ratio is three to one, three purple. And I like to write this at the underneath just to, so I keep it straight for myself. Three purple to one white. Uh, genotypic ratio, though, is going to be different. And with the genotypic ratios, you always start with the uh, homozygous dominant. To heterozygous. To homozygous recessive. So with this ratio, we see one to two to one. 
Okay, so again, we have homozygous dominant here. We have two heterozygous, okay, and that gives us that number. And then our white flowers are little p, little p, and this is our homozygous recessive here, okay? All right. I think that's all for now. Um, we will do more genetic problems in part three.